the head. Her children are bastards! And she is a whore. I will have your tongue for that. He can keep his tongue. House of Dragon fans, I could make a rap song off what just happened with Vaymon. Streets need a body. Damon kill Vaymon. Damon kill Vaymon. Like, Vaymon, bruh, like what the hell did you think was going to happen? You in here in a room full of Anglo-Saxon Westerosians, you trying to make your plea for the King of Driftmark to an Anglo-Saxon Westerostian, and then you come in here shucking and jiving, calling a white woman children bastards, and then you mess around and call her a whore while her husband is standing in the room. Like, Vayman, what the hell you think was going to happen, man? Gets his head cut off, and as we say in my community, in the black community, you want all the smoke. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is one character that has been wanting all the smoke this whole entire season, and his name is Damon. And Damon wanted all the smoke, chopped this man head off, and left the bottom half of his head with the tongue. I'm going to break this thing down from A to Z. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on those notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. Damn, dude, what the hell was you thinking? Um, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and I also do have a TikTok. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a six-year time jump in this episode. We done got these kids a little older, and we're moving things up. So in the beginning, we see the homie, the man who won all the smoke, Damon, going to get another egg from Cyrax. And as I predicted last week, these damn Targaryens, if you just tongue kiss them, your ass is going to get pregnant. Well, in this time jump... My man done had two kids. He's had Aegon III, Viserys II, and now Rhaenyra is currently pregnant with Visenya, who he's getting this egg for right now, ladies and gentlemen. And these are what these kids look like. You've seen her, uh, Rhaenyra introduced the kids to her dad once they got to King's Landing. And man, that was that not just a sad situation when we get there, but we're going to get there in just a second. And then we get... Joceris, learning how Valerian, as they speak that good old English talk, my lord, my lady, the, the winds of Westeros blow as your fragrance and your perfume lingers in lovely tea. Yeah, he's over here learning this high Valerian. And as he's learning the high Valerian, the maester is over here just showing him that this was the path of Aegon's conquest. And he seems like he's you know, he wants to learn the High Valerian, but he don't seem like, you know, he really don't care that much. But he's trying to learn anyway for the sake of, you know, he's going to be a king at some point in time. So you need to be able to talk that good talk. And when you're around other people with your mom and daddy and they don't want people to hear what they're saying, this can be your way of talking in damn disguise, my brother. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we get to the scene where they arrive here at King's Landing, ladies and gentlemen, because a plan has been put into place. They got to figure out what the hell is going on over here with the daddy. And they get greeted by Lord Caswell. Um, this gentleman is the same dude that greeted them uh, when Renera was having her baby with uh, Laner. And he greeted her then. He's obviously going to be an ally for her. He's obviously mutiny in this household. He does not give a damn about Queen Allison, and he has basically showed his love to Renera. And then we get on in here to this damn Allison. Boy, boy, boy. And over these six years, she's grown more and more in love with her faith. And what has she done? She's redecorated the kingdom now that King Viserys has been sick. You see that she's got the faith of the seven all over the damn place, even in the windows. And she's wearing the faith of the seven necklace. And basically, you even heard them say the faith of the seven needed to borrow some money. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys remember the old Game of Thrones and how the faith wound up taking over the kingdom. And those are the people that made Cersei walk the plank 
up and down the road, butterball ass naked. You see kind of the same situation going on here. You know, faith should not have anything to do with politics in any situation because at the end of the day, they show just how hypocritical they are when they want power and all that good stuff so that they can rule the masses through what they call faith, but just basically trying to control people. And that's what Allison is doing here. And they have the small council meeting where Vayman shows his ass up, making his claim to be king of Driftmark <clears throat> in the absence of the sea snake. And guess what? The small council is all about it because they don't want them bastard children sitting on anybody's throne. Allison, on the other hand, she don't seem like she really about that action. Like she just seems like she's tired of playing this game of thrones. But the hand of the King Otto, he ain't. He loved playing the game of thrones. He wants to rule the damn throne. And he's all like, Allison, I'm going to push your ass the same way I did when I pushed you on Viserys. Ain't no needing you bailing out now. You're going to get us across this finish line, my little daughter. We see Renera go into the room with her daddy, King Viserys. And ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake. Have you ever in your life wanted to see the walking dead in real life? Well, by George, hot damn it, you got it. King Viserys is the living embodiment of the walking dead. His ass is dead. And did you guys see the look on his face when he took that mask off? He has no eye. He's missing a cheek. He could be a character in the MCU. And he's here talking to Renera, and she introduces all her kids to him. But he's just having these issues where he's, he's basically high on tea and the milk of the poppy. And he's thinking that this is Allison. He's getting Renera confused with Allison here. And in the end, he gets Allison confused with Renera. And you see Damon sniffing what the hell is in this cup. And it's just nothing but milk of the poppy. Post your comments down below that if they had milk of the poppy now, which they do in a different form, would you be wanting to drink some of that milk of the poppy to make yourself feel better as they did in this thing right here. And then we get to Allison and the servant girl. Ladies and gentlemen, a part of me thought Allison was going to be cruel and be ready to off this servant girl. Then I had to think about her history. Allison hasn't killed anyone. The only two people Allison has showed any aggression, ill will toward has been Renera and her own son, Aegon II. And so... She basically talks to this servant girl, and the servant girl's like, he jumped on me, blah, 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 put himself on me, and the servant girl is ready to just, you know, pledge her allegiance to Allison, and Allison believes her. Allison believes everything this girl's saying. Even so much so, she's paying the girl to leave, but also wants that girl to drink that damn uh, moon tea. And this is, like I said, this was how you had... Uh, a morning after pill way back in the days before Christ, ladies and gentlemen. And she gives the girl some gold, tells the girl to drink the tea, and the girl is gone. Goodbye. Never to be seen again. And Allison is extremely hot with her damn son. So now she goes in the room and she has a little talk with her son and basically tells him, bruh, you are not my son. <laughs> beats them up. And ladies and gentlemen, from everything I'm understanding, this just basically plays to how Aegon II was in the book. He's a drunkard. He's a rapist. Um, he's just a pure fuck up, ladies and gentlemen. He does not want to be king. He doesn't want to have a throne. And what was funny about this was his wife, Helena, because remember, Alicent betrothed these two kids of hers. This is what Targaryens do. Helena comes in and wants to know where's the servant girl that's supposed to be getting her kids ready. <laughs> this is the servant girl working with Aegon's kids and he's in here sleeping with her, putting himself on her, forcing himself on her. And you hurt Helena's feelings. The mama's having to hug Helena and console her because you didn't have to get rid of her favorite servant girl that was supposed to be getting their three kids together. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with this time jump, Helena and Aegon II have had kids. She's had three. Jaehaerys, Maelar, and Jaehaera are the three kids that 
Helena has had. And at some point in time, I guess we're going to see them. It just won't be anytime soon right now, ladies and gentlemen, because they got so much more story. They've got to get through the last two episodes here this season. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we get on to Renera and Allison actually meeting up with each other. And at first, it seems like, you know, they might have a good meeting with each other. It's been six years. They haven't seen each other. And then, ladies and gentlemen, it goes straight to damn fisticuffs. They even had to highlight and show that cut that Renera has on her arm from the dagger, just making it crystal clear that there's not going to be a mending of friends because that cut is a constant reminder, a constant look you in the face of the divide, not only between Renera and Allison, but the divide of this house. She's got a dividing line right there on her damn arm. You see Renera's kids going through the yard, just reminiscing about when they used to be here at King's Landing. And then you see my man old Christian Cole using his star weapon to spar with Eamon, who is a full-grown steroid boy now. Man, damn, this thing grew up and is the biggest one of the two. He's bigger than Aegon II. And ladies and gentlemen, he's holding his own with Christian Cole, who is a pretty good fighter. And Christian Cole told him, look, bro, you ready to go and win tournaments. This scary looking thing says, bro, I don't give a damn about tournaments. Ladies and gentlemen, his ass is crazy. He has a zeal, a thirst, a love for violence that all happened to him when his ass was being hurt and picked on. And those kids teased him with a damn pig that was supposed to be a dragon. And all that animosity is within him. And the only thing this is leading up to, ladies and gentlemen, is going to have to be a big damn battle between him and I want all the smoke, Damon. That's all it's leading up to. I see it coming. Hell, that's why they almost look alike. And then we go out into the God's Woods, ladies and gentlemen, where Renera sees Rainies. And for the first time, we get a chance to see Raina who has been staying at Dragonstone with her daddy. And as we saw earlier, Bela has been staying at Driftmark with Rainies. And out here, ladies and gentlemen, Renera and Rainies decide to betroth their children to basically supplant their power and make things kosher. And you can also see that Rainies has on the black dress. And throughout this whole episode, people were wearing the colors of which fashion they were going to be in. But I do have one specific question about one of these kids who was not wearing the right color, in my opinion. And I want you book aficionados to leave me a comment. But right here, Renera basically tells her, I never killed Laner. And she's not really lying because Laner is still alive. But I'm sure 100% Rainies doesn't believe it. And Rainies, you got to think, you know, other than her grandchildren, she's damn near by herself. Neither one of her kids are alive. And her damn husband has been gone for six years. And now you hear that he's hurt. And then, ladies and gentlemen, Lord have mercy. We get to all these different people trying to pledge their allegiance for the damn throne of Driftmark. And this shit was funny as hell. The funniest part was Vaymon. <clears throat> as I said earlier, bruh, you in here with all these Anglo-Saxon Westerosians, there's literally only like two black folks in here, three really. You've got um, the grandchildren, Bela and Raina, you, hell, your damn squadron that you came to King's Landing with is barely black. And you up here thinking you're going to shuck and jive in front of all these white folks and get what you want? I thought to myself, ladies and gentlemen, before we before this scene is over, with, he's not making it out of here off with his head. And next thing I know, it's off with his head, ladies and gentlemen, by Damon. You called his wife a whore. You called those children bastards. Hell, the king was about to come try to cut you with his old ass. He would probably took 20 minutes to get down there to you to come off that throne. And before he could do it, Damon off you. And that shit was so funny to me, man. I was just dying laughing. But what was funny also was, did you guys see the way Eamon was looking? Like he just had a damn nut after Damon off Vayman's head. Like I said, folks, you need a rap hook. Damon off Vayman. Damon killed Vayman. That's your rap hook. But Eamon was looking like, oh, yeah, that was so good. 
And we know that's going to lead to a battle between him and Damon, and I can't wait to see it. But the other face of jubilation in this thing was Aegon II, who he's happy as hell at all the things that came out of this meeting when the daddy came down there and saved Rhaenyra to make sure that her son is going to be the head of Driftmark and to just basically solidify that dad is still on Team Rhaenyra in terms of being the queen of everything. Aegon II is happy as hell because he don't want to be nowhere near that throne because he wouldn't be able to do all the dastardly things he's currently doing. So he was happy as hell. He's another person that was happy as hell. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we get to the dinner scene. And these TV shows and their dinner scenes, people, these shits are funny as hell. And at first, it seems like we're going to get some peace and tranquility all up in the house, right? The king wants peace and tranquility. It seems that way in the beginning until these damn kids start popping off at the mouth. Now, remember, this is some deeply seated animosity these kids have for each other because it started from Renera and Allison. So oh, at first, you've got Aegon II, who by this point in time, he's probably done slept with more women than Wilt Chamberlain did in his 10,000 women career. He's over here getting into the ear of Jaceris, who is has just been promised to one of the twins, and he's saying, you virgin ass, is you going to even know what to do? Is you going to know what hole to put it in? Do you put it in her ear, her nose? You don't know what the hell you're doing. Just giving it to my man. And what was funny was how his own wife, Aegon's wife stood up, Helena, and said, you really need to shut the hell up because you've been nothing but a bad husband. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, as weird as Helena is, I probably wouldn't have been a good husband to her weird ass either. Anytime you have a wife that talks to spiders, you know, plucks spiders eyeballs out and talks to them, uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't be all that great of a husband to that woman either. But then we have a moment where it seems as though, you know, the tranquility and peace is back and Allison and Renera seem like they're going to become friends again. But ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived because Allison says, let me get the kids home. Excuse me. Renera says, let me get the kids home and I'll fly back on Dragonback. Renera is not talking about coming back on Dragonback and having tea and crumpets with Allison. Renera is talking about coming back on Dragonback to set this place ablaze because you viper ass high towers is in here basically draining the life out of my daddy. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what she was talking about. Then we see the maestro of whisperers, Macera. And what I thought was Damon was nothing more than the same lady that was with Allison to give that moon tea to the servant girl. So obviously, Macera, who is definitely going to be Team Black, has her whisperers out here, ears to the street, as we say in the community, listening and knowing everything that's going on. And then, ladies and gentlemen, they end with the death of King Viserys as he is thinking that he is talking to Rhaenyra about the long night. He's talking about the conquest of Aegon the Conqueror to Alicent, thinking that it's Rhaenyra and Alicent thinking that she's going to be doing his wishes is going to put Aegon II on the throne when she doesn't realize that he's really and truly talking to his daughter but that don't matter because now because she's one of these people that is beholding the duty and faith she is thinking that she is fulfilling this man's last dying wish which is the duty of putting Aegon II on the throne and ladies and gentlemen Viserys dies thinking about Rhaenyra's mama and now we are getting ready to have our official dance of the dragon wow Whew, what an episode, ladies and gentlemen. So please post me all your comments on everything you think that's going to happen. I will have my trailer breakdown for episode nine tomorrow, and I will also go live for this episode tomorrow night at 9 p.m. And ladies and gentlemen, you might see the Hood Targaryen with his fire and ice butter knife. So tune in tomorrow. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, go get yourself that life game. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Be sure to download the podcast because I put these 
on the podcast every single week, enjoying the fanfare and the new people we've got coming in watching this show. And until that next sexy as hell video, I'll see you guys.